All right, we're folks. We'll get started. And if you're watching, obviously you don't hear any sound. We have trouble with the sound. And there's no, there's nothing wrong with the camera. I have got a beard, so <laughs> it is what it is. I promised my wife, Marstine, I'd get, I'd show her a beard one day before I died, and then I had done it for 47 years, so I thought I'd grow one, and now she gets to see it, so it will probably going next time you see me. But anyway. Do we get here a ho, ho, ho? A ho, 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 ho. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, we're glad you're with us, and I'm sorry no sound. This will be going down, of course, later on on the recording, but it is what it is. We'll do the best we can. And the equipment here is getting kind of old, just like we are. So these things happen. Let's get started. I want to read a verse to you in the book of 1 John. Something that we need to think on once in a while and, and maybe share with other people more than we do. I, I get, doing what I do on the radio, I get to talk to a lot of people. And on Thursday, <coughs> I'm in the office, the phone rings a lot. People call and sharing things and talking about things. And, and I, I, I got to tell you, I got to be straight up with you. A lot of people are hurting for a lot of reasons. Not just physically. They're hurting mentally. They're hurting spiritually. And, and they are so confused. And, it, and maybe, it's just, maybe I'm just a simple guy. I don't know. Just simple. But I try to tell them that the battles in their life, if they put their faith in Christ, will strengthen them to get through that battle. But they have a hard time grasping that. You know that it's by faith that you walk, not by sight. Is that not true? Mm -hmm. I don't understand anything that happens in my own life. But I do know that my God is still in charge. And if we lose the concept that God is still on the throne, we lost the whole battle. The war is over for us. Either you have faith in who he is, and things happen to you for a purpose if you're his child, or he's not God at all. And he's not going to play second fiddle in your life. It isn't going to happen that way. I see it all the time. We want to do things our way and still call Him our God and our Savior. It doesn't work that way. I cannot be Marsha's husband and have five other wives on the side. It doesn't work that way. It, won't, it's, it, can, be, it can be done that way. But anyway, this one verse I want to share with you. In 1 John chapter 1, listen very carefully because I want you to hear this. Now, either, either this book is the truth or God is a liar. If this book isn't true, if the 1611 King James Bible is not the inspired word of God, then we are all definitely in danger of hellfire. Amen. But he said this to me, he said to you. Listen to this. this is, listen to this. In verse 9. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Now, either he feels he's telling the truth or he's lying. I believe he said, means what he said, don't you? Mm -hmm. If we confess our sins, repent of our sins, he is faithful and he will forgive your sins. Now, folks, if, if, we, don't, if we didn't have that hope alone, what, do we, what, would, what would we believe in? How would we ever determine in our mind whether we're okay or not if we didn't have faith that he said, I'll forgive you sins if you ask me? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to start preaching. I've got things covered. But I, I, what if he looked at you and he said, all right, uh, he said, I'll forgive your sins if you give me $100,000 or give $100,000 to charity. I'd forgive him too if he gave me that. <laughs> 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 but you see what I'm saying? What if he said, well, if you do this, I'll, do, I'll forgive you. He said, no, you confess your sins to me. I'll forgive your sins. Amen. And by faith, we can go from that point on. Know that he kept his word. And it's by faith that we live it. Not by sight, not by feelings, not by what man says, but what he says. That's good preaching already. I didn't mean to start preaching. And verse 10 says, and it says, it says he'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He'll cleanse us from it. And I don't know about anybody else in here, but I had a lot of cleaning need done in my life. Me too, yeah. So I understand that. And the next verse says, For if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. No man on this earth other than Jesus Christ ever lived a sinless life. Period. That's it. Now let's move on. Let's start something that some of us in here, some of us in here are hunters. They'll enjoy this. In Pennsylvania... Now, which is right up north of us, old ways. 
A guy killed a 679 pound black bear with a 357 pistol at five yards. Oh my God. Yes. Another guy killed a 704 pound uh, bear uh, in, in uh, Clearfield County and the biggest recorded up there this year. Now this is a black bear now, mind you. This was killed in uh, Forest County, 780 pounds. Wow. That is huge for a black bear. Yeah. I mean, really? <laughs> hey, really? If I had a bear that close to me and all I have is 357, they'd probably suffocate up. Because I'm my business. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't be able to breathe. <laughs> Five yards, that's a, and a 600 pound bear at the 357. That's like a toy in your hand, yes. wouldn't it? Uh, and Lynn mentioned a minute ago, before we started on the air here, about go, the internet doesn't work when we think we went to the moon, right? Well, this is no lie. Russia is going to verify whether USA actually landed on the moon or not. Yeah. Are they going up there answer, to take a look? I answer question. Yeah, they are. Okay. Answer question of uh, President Madova whether there were Americans on the moon. We have we have set this objective to fly and verify whether they've been there or not. Yeah. And we haven't been there. But this is going to bring it out eventually. We're going to take it down if there's one there. So. But are they really going to go? They're, they're going to fly. They're not going to go there. They're going to fly around and take pictures yeah, of them. Post up that tail. Uh, they can't go there. So anyway, <laughs> back to the Week magazine. You know, and this I'm going to read to you. Is so sad. That it, it it's sad. The the Emily Schiff, 19, was left with only twenty dollars to her name when her parents disavowed her after they discovered she was a, a lesbian. The parents tried to reason with her. Nothing changed her. So they said, we can't allow you to live with us and live like that. That's hard. But godly parents have to take a stand. And I'm seeing this right here, and I just hope and pray. And I know this may sound silly. I don't know this Emily shit. But she's 19. She needs her prayers. Absolutely. The world has deceived her. I was talking to a lady coming over this morning. Found out that a little girl that I grew up with and a boy who grew up around me are shacking up together. And no one acts like anything wrong with it. I don't want to say, Dick, it breaks my heart. It really breaks my heart. I care, I saw those children grow up and it makes tears in my eyes know that they're in this and they're living in outright fornication. There's no, there's no, conscience left or right and wrong anymore. It seems like they just they just do what you want to do. As the Bible says, there's no fear of God before their eyes. And whether they had godly parents or not, even society at one time thought that was wrong, wasn't acceptable. Now everything goes. And it's breaking my heart, Phil. It is. It breaks my heart. We got one audio channel working now, so we got some more. Okay, yeah, we, we got audio. I mean Praise mono. God. Mono. Now now back to, uh, says, good week for history. Now this, they said good week for this, this. After the Texas Board of Education voted to change why students are told about the cause of the Civil War, students will be taught that slavery played a central role instead of being one of the three factors being along with states' rights and, and uh, sexual, sexualism. So they're, they're being taught that it's all about slavery, nothing else. Well, that's a lie. An outright lie. Yeah. That's all you hear from the liberal news anyway. It's all about slavery. They don't mention it by state rights. Wit and wisdom. When everything is coming your way, you're in the wrong lane. <laughs> <laughs> Animals are such agreeable friends. They ask no questions. They pass no criticism. That's very good. The opposite of love is not hate. This is good now. It is indifference. Get that? The opposite of love is indifference. A non caring person has no life in them. Another week magazine. A Magala, California garbage man is being held as a hero after he rescued a 93 year old woman from a fast approaching wildfire. Driver Dane Ray Cummings 
had been told by his supervisor to cut bait and head home to avoid the, pla the blaze, but he refused, refused, determined to finish his route and check on, on older residents. At, at his last stop, he saw Margaret News Newsom standing out on the porch waiting for help. He seated her in the cab, breaking company protocol, and drove five hours to safety while Newsom shared her life story, including the time she sang back up to Frank Sinatra. It was the best conversation I've had in a truck, coming said. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that special? All right, so we got one line going out. So now you can hear me, folks. And if you see my face turning gray, I can't help it. I'm, I mean, what can I say? My wife wouldn't see me in a beard, so I, I did it. Here's, by the way, y'all probably already know that uh, George Bush died last night, senior. Uh, but this is a very telling picture, I do believe. Here we have the Bushes and the Clintons and Obamas all standing around hugging each other. That's a family picture. And they're supposed to be totally opposite of each other, aren't they? Mm -hmm. What they say. Mm -hmm. But here you go. Yeah. There you go. So I, I would say, if you put it right below that, American people are stupid. Mm. Birds of a feather flock together. There you go. Exactly. And take it any way you want to. Trump said, and these tweets, Trump likes tweet. Y'all know that? Yeah. yeah. Trump said, including, uh, said, let's talk about the news media, and the news media, it really, isn't, it really isn't good. But he said that we have to have the possibility of the United States starting our own worldwide network, our government run news network. I mean, what could go wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, we talked to the Russians to find out. Like yeah, <laughs> so anyway, and this is something that this is. I'm not making this up. This is for real. Brace yourselves. A hundred and sixty-three percent meat tax could be coming. Don't make that up. I'm sorry, I'm not. How would you like to pay a hundred and sixty-three percent tax every time you want a steak or a burger? What about when you want some bacon with breakfast, or when you're craving a ham sandwich? After much talk, after much talk, economists and so-called health experts, and pay attention, have finally decided that, what, that what's best for society. No steak for you. Do you think you your family deserve an extra tax for having a steak every, every now and then? Well, brace yourselves because social taxes are what's for dinner. Remember when smoking was the only social, socially injured target of government health and, uh, and nannies, then fat, then sugar, then caffeine, and now even soda? Well, coming from meat now. We ought to get ready to cut down the global warming. Here you go. Yeah, I just remember H.G. Wells said um, that in order for the government to be in control, you need the people to be docile. And if they were all vegetarians, they wouldn't. They'd be, they'd be more docile. They, that's true. Yes, that's very that's true. Fine. He said that. And, and I'm going to say this, and, and this probably gets some negative reviews, but it is what it is. If the government is providing your needs, including your health care, then they may have a right to tell you what you need, can't eat. You're paying the bill. That's fair, isn't it? I mean, if, if you're a ward of the state and they're taking care of you, I have cattle, I know what they eat and don't eat. I take good care of them, Phil. They're a profit to me. So I'm just saying, if, if man provides your needs, whatever you think, hmm. it is what it is. Now, this is something we, we saw coming. It's been going on for a while now. And it's trying to make more and more states handle this. Oregon's new red flag law, state confiscates nearly 50 gun owners' guns. They now have a law in, in, in Maryland and Oregon that if your neighbor calls up and says, Leon Hoodlock's a danger to herself and her family and her friends, and she has guns. Now, I'm not making this up. This is right here. They, the cops, will come and take your guns. No warrant, no arrest. They come and disarm you because your neighbor said you might be a trouble to the neighbors and danger to yourself. Anyone can call and report that you've got guns in your house if this, be, if this becomes law in West Virginia and the cops will come and take your guns. No, I said no reason other than that you were turned in. Yeah, this is just, they're, they're enforcing now. You've got 50, 50 different guns. Gun that's not drama, guns. that's and, tyranny. It is, in, in Oregon. Flat out. Now, I don't know what the answer to this is. I don't know what how anybody would react here if they come to your house and say your neighbor said that your Dick Paul's dangerous to himself or his neighbors when we come and get his guns. I think I'd go get the neighbor first. Yeah. And again, there, 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 there's a place in western Oregon where the sheriff's going to make uh, the, the um, county seat uh, a gun sanctuary city. Did All you right. See that? I didn't see that. I yeah. like that. I yeah, like that. I like that. That's been on the news. But, but this is how far we come 
towards total tyranny. Seriously, this is tyranny. I mean, just somebody call and say, I'm, I'm scared of him, and they come disarm him. Or not call him. That's my point. Well, it, Nobody calls. Well, they, they, but they yeah, said they, they can make it up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. They aren't going to give yeah. you who, who called them. Now, this is something we talked about before in the past many times. U.S. retailers could soon adopt facial recognition tech on, to stop thieves, but privacy advocates warn shoppers will be watched without their knowledge. Now, this is already going on. Yeah. Facial recognition had been widely adopted at airports, stadiums, traffic intersections, and even some schools. <clears throat> now, experts say retail is the next industry to become a target of the technology, pointing to a growing number of suppliers and companies willing to put in their, put in their stores. U.S. retailers are expected to begin using facial recognition to, to stop shoplifters or spot criminals. Now, pay attention to this, please. Stop. But many are eyeing it for much broader uses, including customer tracking or loyalty programs, according to Biometric Update. So if you let yourself be tracked inside the store with your biometrics, they'll give you loyalty cards. You'll get discounts. I guarantee you that people will not say a word about it. No, they'll go along with it. Yeah. Right now in Sweden, right here it is, Sweden is on the verge of becoming a cashless society. People over there right now are being chipped, literally, and said young people love it. They're being chipped and doing all transactions with their hands. They shot them going through a, a, a like a train terminal. They put their hands on a, on a on a scanner and go through and get on the train. Now, folks, I'm not saying that's a mark the beast that's awful close to it. And we've all all been sucked into it one step at a time, haven't we? If a hundred years ago. Satan would have said, okay, everybody here's got to have whatever done to them. The people would have rebelled. But now the young people are all for it. There's a video out, a six-month-old little baby holding a cell phone and happy. They take the cell phone and starts crying. Get back till he quits. Take the cell phone and starts crying. As young as six months old, they're getting hooked on cell phones. Oh, my golly. Mm. Now, you tell me that's not, that is not dangerous. Yeah. You said in any public place, you go to a restaurant, you go to, I don't worry, even workplace I see this. They're sitting there scanning through their phone. Yeah. You go to walking down the street. Oh, yes. They, they come to have dinner as a family. In the supermarket. No one's talking. They're scanning through the phone. Yeah. They're addicted. Now this is going to be so handy. No cash needed. Just put a chip in your hand. It's all taken care of. No dangers there. Nobody can steal it. Someone will figure out a way. Oh, you yeah. Well, or they'll shut you off. Well, yeah, you can get it, but then again, they can turn it off. Well, that, that's coming. There's, in China, right. they, they already have social credits. In China, they can cut you off from everything. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, social yeah. credit score. And and I'm not making this up. I, this is another, another area, some probably. They're talking about doing the same thing here. Social credits. Not the same wording, but the same well, idea. So if you don't behave, they'll cut off your right to live. Well, they're already taking it in Cal or, uh, for 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 uh, those guys, not not the uh, Russians, but the other ones. Chinese. Chinese. They're over yeah. there. They're 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 all pegging their society out. What you. And they found they what just you can get what you can't, what you can do, what you can't. Yeah, that's the same thing. Being, social credit scores. Yeah, it's all. If, if it's you all don't behave being, yourself, you can't do anything. It's being implemented. Yep. But right now. It's and they're working on right here. Believe me, they are. Yeah. They just some things just started in this country brand new. There's, an, there's a country, I'm, I'm forget. I'm trying to find it from Sweden, but the Rebecca Comhart, it's a Dutch, Dutch. It's a it's a Dutch physician, who heads an aid access and women and women on web is offering. Abortion by mail. You can now legally order in this country. And it's 97% effective for $95 pills to kill your baby. Abortion by, by mail. What in the heck? They say that they're not legal in this country to manufacture you, but they can ship them in from other, overseas. For 95 bucks, you go out and have a fling, you get pregnant, no big deal. 95 bucks, kill the baby. Does somebody see a lack of conscience here besides me? People, I don't know what to say about this. There's a righteous God in heaven and he sees this. And they come up with a new word. 
We know there's how many different kinds of sexes can you be now? Fifty something. Yeah, sixty something. I think now it is. Yeah, yeah. You can be a you can you can be a male, Dave, female, Marm, or in between. You can be a fluid gender, or uh, I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> But now they got a new one. I'm not making this up. And God, God help us. This is true. They've added a new word to it. Robosexuality. People are, are now buying sex robots. And if you prefer that, you have, it's called robosexuality. Oh, my golly. If this doesn't make you angry, it breaks your heart at the same time there's something wrong with you. My grandchildren are growing up in a society where this is going to be normal. Does anybody here get angry beside me about this? Mm -hmm. mm. And Colorado. Golly, they should be so proud of themselves. This is CNN. And in one of the elections nights, many first, Colorado elected Jared Polis, who will be the first country's first openly homosexual governor. Not only is Polis open about his sexuality, he has a long-term partner named Martin, Mar Marlon Reese. The realization that there wouldn't just be a barrier-breaking uh, homosexual man in the governor's mansion, but a homosexual couple, but not, but not lost on Polo, Polo supporters. They went nuts when Polo introduced Reese as the state's first, first, first man during his victory speech. I want to thank my personal support network for, and foremost, of course, my amazing partner and the first first man in history of Colorado, Marlon Reese, Polo said to a cheering crowd. Oh my God. America, in the Bible, you'll find where it says Israel, Israel is Sodom and Gomorrah. We are Israelites. America is Sodom and Gomorrah. Am I telling the truth? Totally. Yeah. We are in time Babylon in Romans 8, in Romans 8. Revelation 18. It says that we not only do it here, we export these spirits all over the world. And we have done that or not. Yep. Whole world. We have more here. pornography produced here than any nation in the world, and we ship it all over the world. America, which once was a Christian nation, is now spitting in the face of God and telling me he's gonna let this slide by and nothing's gonna happen. The Muslims are more holier. They, than they we really are. are. They are. Yeah. They have more moral standards than us. I can understand why they're the enemy. Why they call them the enemy. And now, in in the University of Colorado in Colorado Springs, they have a Christian group there that meets and has Bible studies. But this, the, the, the school demands Christians let atheists lead Bible studies. <laughs> Do you see what's happening? The church has been so ineffective for so long that they're losing any respect for the church. I can remember this was a young boy, and um, Humphrey was our senator. Y'all remember Humphrey? Hubert. Hubert Humphrey. Hubert Humphrey. He said, and he said that they said that the politicians feared the church. <laughs> they laughed through us today. Yeah. True? That's in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Just an interesting church. point. Uh, <coughs> Hubert Humphrey was the first. He had can died of cancer. <coughs> He's the first person to actually do chemotherapy. And after he did it, he said he would never do it again. It was it was horrible. Not bad. Yeah. Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York City. Been going on for decades, right? Yeah. Big deal. Well, they had always the homosexual and lesbian march in there, but they had the first lesbian kiss on camera in Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And some parents were upset. Well, but they'll probably go back again next year and do it again. I mean, we give, we give whatever to all this crap. Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, they, they, these are heroes, we man. Shoved in our face. And Phil's got this kind of thing coming up pretty soon. Up because this will be on video in a minute. This is a this is a eleven year old transgender boy in Good Morning America. You'll see it today. See it today. This has actually happened in America, and the parents are all for it. What, what do you do? He's a transgender eleven year old boy trans, transgender. Oh. Now I'm gonna close with this, and we'll let Phil do his. Well, he's not business. actually transgender. He's a crossdresser. He's a cross. He, yeah, he's a porn star. 
That's, now did you hear that? Say that again. A porn star. A porn star. 11 years old. 11. 11. He's a baby. Between 6,000 and 10,000 churches in the U.S. are dying each year. They're closing. And it's no wonder. They've been dead for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. The church in America has been dead for a long time. There's also the infiltration. These people come running in and, you know, church has to take in a yeah, the church, trans dress and that's up to the church to do that will stand so they're, they're losing it right what what is it that would draw the people to the to the church today salt. are they preaching the gospel of christ so what is it salt yeah it's exactly preserve, there's no salt preserve. no light right so the churches are closing and in, in, in my circle one of the church i pastored for seven years white water field have church closed and it's it literally fallen in well, and I'm not bragging on me. This is glory to my Father in heaven. When I started pastor, they had like 12 members. I left there at 60-some. And it was prospering. A few years after I left, it closed. Not because of me, but the truth is being preached there, because I was there, I know it was. It's now closed and falling down. Old Town Field Baptist Church, where Dale preached for Dale preached for, it's closed down. Anthony Creek, of course, uh, Glenn, Glenn uh, and Norma, or Glenn uh, Wiley preached, is closing down. The churches are dying because they've been dead on the inside for years. Christ told the Pharisees, you're full of dead man's bones. You look good on the outside, a whitewashed sepulcher, but on the inside full of dead man's bones. Is that true? Amen. Whenever the Holy Ghost is not there, the gospel is not being preached, it's nothing but dead man's bones inside, and they're starting to collapse. And here's proof of it. But something, something's got to fill that void. Something will come, there's no such thing as a void. Something will fill that empty space. In this country, it's Muslims, atheists, and whoever knows what else coming in to fill this void. Something will fill the void. Somebody will supply that need for a philosophy, for, for a, a way for people to have grasp on something to hold on to. And right now the Muslim faith is growing within some bounds. In the last 20 years, the church has not added 1% to its numbers in 20 years in this country. Not 1%. When you go to the church, all you hear is salvation every time you go, and nothing else. Nothing else. No, no, no power to it. But I'm no. telling you, this is what the Word of God says. It's going to happen to a lukewarm church. It, it's, it just deteriorates. But nothing is a void as a field. No. Something will come in and fill that void. In the young people's mind today, the parents are not teaching right from wrong, and they're not. If they're not doing it strictly and strongly, and keep them, out of, keep them out of places where they're influenced by the world and most of these public fools places we call schools today and in front of the theaters and other places if they're not teaching them strongly about the word of God and making sure they're grounded in it who are they going to follow? A lukewarm nothing or the Muslims who have something to believe in? Policy makes government antichrist. <clears throat> Curriculum makes schools antichrist. Amen. Same thing. I'm going to say this in close. We're going to watch some videos. Now listen, please. Please listen. This is real simple. If they are not pro-Christ, they are anti-Christ. Amen. If they deny the Word of God, which is Christ in writing right here, right? If they deny this Word, they are anti-Christ. I don't care what part you like or don't like. It was sin 4,000 years ago. We're still sin today. He didn't change his mind on sin. And we have denied his word by compromising what we know his word is against and compromising what we should be doing because we don't offend anybody. So we are anti-Christ. Either pro or anti. Can't be both. We're going to watch some videos now, folks. Portland, Oregon is located in the northwestern United States where the Willamette and Columbia Rivers meet. Downtown Portland was built with pedestrians in mind so you can easily walk the central district to take in the city's architecture, parks, and fountains at your own pace. The heart of the city is the amphitheater on Pioneer Courthouse Square. It's the place everyone keeps coming back to after browsing galleries, shopping, and sightseeing. Do bring an umbrella because showers are very common, although there's plenty of sunshine to enjoy in the summer. 
This is also a great spot for people watching on a lazy afternoon. In the middle of all this natural beauty sits Portland. More than just a place to stop and smell the roses, this is a place to truly experience the laid-back atmosphere and splendor of the Great Northwest. If you haven't heard the name Desmond Napolis, get ready for this trailblazing 11-year-old drag kid who RuPaul is calling the future. His bravery is inspiring so many. We're going to talk to him in just a moment, but first, let's take a look at his amazing story. I am Desmond. I'm 11 years old, and I like pizza, trains, and drinking root beers and it's caffeine-free. I also do drag, and I love to put on makeup, dresses, and wigs, and of course, jewelry if necessary. My full drag name is Desmond's Amazing. I feel very happy to have a mom that accepts me. It really touches me deeply that there are other children out there that he's reaching and they're listening to him and he's influencing them to be themselves. I'm very proud of him. I'm proud that he's found his path so early. My greatest joy in this is just seeing Desmond happy. I love doing drag because it makes me feel amazing and self-expressive. It just feels amazing to know that people love what I do. My one big message would be three words, be yourself always. Please welcome Desmond Naples, AKA Desmond is amazing. <laughs> I love that you love root beer caffeine free. Mm -hmm. I can get on board with that. My mom doesn't like me drinking caffeine. Does it make you hyper? Yeah, me too. They don't like when I drink caffeine either. But Desmond, you're one of the youngest and first drag queen slash kids. Mm -hmm. And I've heard, you, I've heard that you've gotten messages from young adults who look up to you for being who you are. What are some of the notes you've gotten? Some of the notes I've gotten are like that you inspire me very much and I wish I could have had the support that you have um, when I was a child. Yeah. And your parents, we saw your parents in the piece that we did, and your parents are so supportive of you, but they, they've also, they've encouraged you to stay and be who you are. So how has that inspired you to be open about dressing and drag? They support me by letting me do what I want to do and um, let me um, dress up and let me play with um, makeup and trains. And um, yeah, I really like trains. When I'm at a drag, most of the time I'm playing with trains. <laughs> there and not everyone's accepting of things and some people have criticized you what do you say to them um it's fine um <laughs> Desmond here, so thank, thank you. you, Desmond. But we also have some people that wanted to come see you personally. So please welcome Head of Lettuce. How are you? Well, thank you for having me. Hi. Hello, 
Alexa now. And we can't forget wow. Melissa Edwards. And good morning to you. <laughs> How cool is this? Good morning, America. What are you expecting this? Shocked. Happily shocked. <laughs> so, so, so for for you three, when you when you see Desmond, what what comes to mind? What do you think about? Inspirational. Yeah. Brave, courageous. <laughs> I wish, because I started uh, doing drag at 15 years old, and obviously not 11, but I wish, even at that age, that I could have had the courage that you have to do what you do and literally yeah. take the art Ooh. and put it in mainstream America. Wow. It's beautiful. You it's amazing. You have the future of drag, so you have a lot to live up to. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's also awesome that you are blessed with parents that yeah. love and support you unconditionally. Yeah. There are some yeah. special gifts you have for Desmond. Yeah. You guys want to tell us what's out here real quick? Well, I, I see, I, I drew Desmond a little green-haired lady. It, it's, <laughs> it's for you. It's to bring you good luck and prosperity in your future. And, and to eat iceberg lettuce. And to eat iceberg lettuce. Good roughage, okay? There you go. <laughs> With tomatoes. Cucumber. Absolutely. <laughs> and I brought you a gift basket of some of my favorite. Mean? Actually, you know what? Let me actually hand it to you because I think you need to have it in your Desmond, hand. Look at those it is some of my favorite makeup essentials that I use <laughs> always. And you know, you can never have enough black eyeliners. So my favorite black eyeliners in there. And I have a makeup tutorial DVD. So uh, you can watch it and pick up a couple of tips and techniques. Oh. Yeah. get on board with well, that. Well, Desmond, you know, I'm a teacher over there, Beyond Belief Dance Company, and um, we would love for you to come take some dance classes. Oh, so, nice. I wanted to bring you a quintessential I got a BBDC <laughs> unicorn. It's got my favorite uh, rhinestone. You cannot be a queen without some diamond nails. <laughs> and some socks. It's got some pins, it's got a little notepad. No, I want you to journal everything that you do because you truly are very brave and courageous. Oh. And let me give you this. Oh. 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 Okay. Thank you guys all for being here. Thank Desmond, you. your parents. Yes. Um, thank you for reminding us all to be who we are on the inside. You can check out Alyssa Edwards on Dancing Queen on Netflix now. Thank you, Head of Lettuce, Chanel, and Alyssa Edwards for being here. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA. This is the Gay Manifesto by Michael Swift, first published in Gay Community News, February 15th through the 21st in 1987. It is also reprinted in the Congressional Record. This is what it states. We shall sodomize your sons, emblems of your feeble masculinity, of your shallow dreams and vulgar lies. We shall seduce them in your schools, in your dormitories, in your gymnasiums, in your locker rooms, in your sports arenas, in your seminaries, in your youth groups, in your movie theater bathrooms, in your army bunkhouses, in your truck stops, in all your male clubs, in your house of Congress, whenever men are with men together. Your sons shall become our minions and do our biddings. They will be recast into our image. 
all laws banning homosexual activity will be revoked. Instead, legislation shall be passed which engenders love between men. All homosexuals stand together as brothers. We shall triumph only when we present a common face to the vicious heterosexual enemy. If you dare to cry faggot, it states, fairy queer at us, we will stab you in your cowardly hearts and defile your dead puny bodies. We will unmask the powerful homosexuals who masquerade as heterosexuals. You will be shocked and frightened when you find that your presidents and their sons, your industrialists, your senators, your mayors, your generals, your athletes, your film stars, your television personalities, your civic leaders, your priests, are not the safe, familiar heterosexual figures you assume them to be. We are everywhere. We have infiltrated your ranks. Be careful when you speak of homosexuals because we are always among you. We may be sitting across the desk from you. We may be sleeping in the same bed with you. All churches who condemn us will be closed. Our only gods are handsome young men. For us, too much is not enough. All males who insist on remaining stupidly heterosexual will be tried in homosexual courts of justice and will become invisible men. We shall rewrite history, history filled and debased with your heterosexual lies and distortions. We shall be victorious because we are filled with the ferocious bitterness of the oppressed who have been forced to play seemingly bit parts in your dumb heterosexual shows throughout the age. We too are capable of firing guns and manning the barricades of the ultimate revolution. Tremble, hetero swine, when we appear before you without our masks. Have you heard or read this article before? Why not? My God, what have we come to? In closing, I make one-minute speeches. When federal judges remove God from the Pledge of Allegiance, federal judges welcome Satan. We have an aristocratic judiciary who's only concerned about it being investigated by the FBI and the IRS. They cater to them, they're scared to death of them, and you better put that in order. I broke no laws, you expel me, I will go down in history as an expelled member, but you know what? I have a very clear conscience, I'm proud to be an American, I hate, him. I hate the government and love America, and the part of the government I hate is what I told you earlier, that executive branch that scares the American people. And let me close by saying no American should be afraid of our government. It is our government. And you should help take it back. I think the Republicans can do that. I think the Democrats want to do that. And I think they're going to take back the House. And somebody better sure as hell do that. Because the American people are beginning to distrust, not just fear. And from fear and distrust comes hate. And God Almighty, where are we going to end up? Very few people vote in America as it is. It was brought up and said, Jim, why don't you go to Speaker Hastert? Hastert owes you. I didn't go to Speaker. I didn't vote for the Speaker to get something from the Speaker. Now you go ahead and expel me, but you ran this place for 50 years, Democrats. And you made the IRS, the FBI, and Justice Department so strong, our people are afraid to death of them. I want to thank Bill Archer and the Republican Party, and that's why I voted for you, Speaker. Twelve years I tried to change the burden of proof in a civil tax case and protect the American people's home from being seized. And now I want to give those statistics because they're relevant to my case and the IRS hates me for it. The law was passed in 98, the trafficking language wasn't in, Clinton threatened to re-veto it. 
Ninety-five percent of the American public wanted the trafficking bill. Republican Chairman Bill Archer called me and said he talked with the speaker and leaders and said, Jim, we're going to put your burden of proof in and we're going to put your language on seizure in the conference and wrote me a letter giving me the credit. Now, let me give you the statistics that I'm proud of and I want to share because this may be the last time on the floor. And I expect it. The year before compared to the year after the law, wage attachments dropped from 3.1 million to 540,000. Thank you, Mr. Archer. Thank you, Rob Portman. Property liens dropped from 688,000 to 161,000. But now let's think of our communities. Seizures of individual family-owned homes dropped from 10,067 to 57 in 50 states when they had to prove it. And you guys did it. Congratulations.
Wait, wait. 